Hi class, welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to be talking about inequalities in two triangles, otherwise known as the hinge theorem. So, first we're going to define what the hinge theorem is. The hinge theorem, I know it's really long, bear with me. It states that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle. So let's stop for a second. So what that means is if I have two sides of one triangle and they match, they're the same length as two sides of another triangle. So we can look at our diagram and see that here. And the first, uh, let's see, in the included angle of the first triangle is greater than the included angle of the second triangle. So here, the included angle is going to be the angle in between the two sides that were given those lengths. So we're looking at 50 degrees and 30 degrees. One is bigger than the other. Then the third side of the first triangle, so the side BC, is going to be greater than the third side of the second triangle, which would be EF. So it's a lot of words, but this is what the hinge theorem gives us. It says if we have those two sides that are congruent, we can look at the size of the angle in between, the included angle in between those two sides, and use that angle to tell us the size uh, relationship between the sizes of that third side. All right, this is also known as the side angle side inequality theorem because we're given two sides with the angle in between, and it's an inequality because they're not equal in this case. All right, let's look at the converse of the hinge theorem or the side 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 inequality theorem. This states that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another, so we have to be given those congruent two sides, two pairs of sides between the two triangles again, but now we're looking at the third side. So if we're given that the third side of the first triangle, if we look at BC is 5, and the third side of the second triangle, EF is 3, then we can state that the angles, the included angles, the angles across from those sides, um, are going to have the same size relationship. So angle A would have to be greater then angle D, because the side across from A is greater than the side across from D. The reason they call this the hinge theorem is because if you think of a door on a hinge, the greater you make that angle, the more you open up that door hinge, the side across from it is also going to get bigger and smaller if you close it up. So it's kind of like it's on a hinge there. All right, so let's look at our examples here. We have determinant the angles or sides are less than or greater than, less than, or equal to, and then state the theorem we used. So the very first one we're looking, and we have one pair of congruent sides here that they give us. And I know using reflexive property of congruence from one of my previous videos that this middle side, the shared side, is going to be congruent. Now, if I'm also given that these third sides are congruent, they're equal to each other, then that means the angles across from those third sides are also going to have to equal each other. Um, so those angle one is going to be equal to angle two. All right, uh, my diagram got a little messy there. We have our two sides, and then because these are congruent, then so are my angles. All right, here we have, we're looking at the measure of the side MS and LS. So again, we need, in order to use these theorems, we need to have our two sets of congruent sides. I'm given MT is congruent to TL. I also know TS is congruent to itself. So I can look at that included angle and say because 98 is greater than 95, then LS has to be greater than MS, or MS is less than LS. So if we look at, now it also asked us to state the theorems that we use. So let's go back for just a second. Here, we were given information about all of the sides, and we were concluding something about the angles. This is the converse of the hinge theorem, or you can think of it as the side-side-side inequality theorem for the first problem. The second one, we were given two sides and an angle. So this is going to be 
the hinge theorem or the side angle side inequality theorem. So be really careful because we've also learned side angle side congruence theorem, side angle side similarity theorem. Now we have side angle side inequality theorem. They all get really mixed up, which is why we call it the hinge theorem. We give it kind of a separate name all on its own. All right, and the last example here, let's look. We're given that we have one pair of congruent sides here, and we have this shared side in the middle will be congruent, and we know the length of the third side. So we're given information about the sides, which means I'm going to be using the converse of the hinge theorem, or the side-side-side inequality theorem, and if I look at the length of that side, I can state that, well, 8 inches is bigger than 7 inches, so angle 1 across from 8 inches must be greater than the measure of angle 2. All right, so um, that's, that's it. That's the hinge theorem. So that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.